Hello everybody, welcome back to more Banjo-Tooie. So, we are now officially on Banjo's next adventure to stop Grunty <laughs> again. But Grunty means a lot more business this time. We are at the entrance to world number one and we're about to see just how different this game is from Banjo-Kazooie. Well, specifically with regards to how the worlds are structured and what to expect when you go in each one. Well, we've opened the way with the power of Jiggy Wiggy, so let's see what World 1 has in store for us. Welcome to the first world, the Mayahem Temple. Basically, everyone I've ever talked to thinks that it's called the Mayhem Temple. Easy to believe that, except there is an A, so it's Mayahem, as in the Mayan Empire. So World 1 is not just your typical grass world, it is a Mayan civilization. With a lot of ruins, and there is still grass and trees. But as you can see, it's a little bit more. There's a little bit more to it than a, your typical first world. What is this? This is a warp pad! Find another one in this world, and you'll be able to warp between them! So this is kind of indicative of what's so different about Banjo-Tooie. Specifically, and I've mentioned this before, the worlds in this game are a lot bigger than in Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie, the worlds are pretty bite-sized and you just basically go in, the jiggies are just kind of scattered around, just lying out for you to pick up. In this one, the worlds are much larger, so there's a lot more to explore. On top of that, the jiggies are a lot harder to get. Very few jiggies in this game are just kind of lying out for you to grab. Most of the time, you'll have to do some kind of a side quest in order to get them. A lot of people don't really like this because they like the aspect of Banjo-Kazooie, where the worlds are small, bite-sized, you can just go and grab everything in a single sitting. Whereas Banjo-Tooie, it's a lot more involved. But I like the bigger worlds. Anyhow. <laughs> wow, I can't believe an entire civilization is just inside this one temple. Also, that's a hollow honeycomb piece. You remember those from the first game. However, that is in a tunnel that is too small for us to be able to go into, so that's a bit of a problem. If we hit pause, we can return to game objects and items. We have one Cheeto page. Jinjos, we can see here, we only have one out of nine of the black Jinjos. View totals is where we can see the world's totals. The Mayhem Temple we can't really see right now. There are ten Jiggies in, the Mayhem, in each world. There are also a hundred notes, just like last time, but the notes are also structured differently than they were in the first game, which is good, but also a little bad. There are three Cheeto pages and I believe three Hollow Honeycomb pieces and five Jinjos. So we're by and large kind of the same as the first game, except more Hollow Honeycomb pieces per world. And there's a couple more things to collect. These statues will come to life and spit darts at us, so we need to watch out for them. And we can't really deal with them just yet. We've got this nice little moat here, and a boulder over here that we can't do anything with. But there's a Jinjo in this water, so we want to go and save him. That's one out of six red Jinjos in the game. Again, the one out of six is not referring to just this level, it's referring to every Jinjo in the game. There are six red Jinjos. Ooh, this is interesting. We can climb up this pole here. However, we can't do anything with that just yet. Anyhow. So, musical notes return here. As you can see, we're gonna pick one up here. You found some notes, boy! <laughs> now come and find me! So, the biggest complaint people have of Banjo-Kazooie 1 is that there were 100 notes on each level, and it didn't save which notes you got. If you collected some notes and then either died or left the level, you would have to collect all of those notes again in order to beat your high score in order to get more notes. In Banjo-Tooie, they did away with that system. If you pick up a note, you have it forever. Good. Which is good. I don't like the game forgetting which notes you've gotten, and it seemed like it was kind of a dumb aspect of the first game. One of the things I complained about the most. But I feel like they went a little too far with Banjo-Tooie, because now, yes, there are still 100 notes on the level and they get permanently collected, but they're now in bundles of five. Instead of having 100 individual notes scattered around, there are just a bunch of f bundles of five, and each level also has a bundle of 20. So really, th there are only 16 notes to collect plus the bundle of 20, essentially, for each world. And for the most part, the notes are just kind of lying out. So they seem almost a little superfluous. I'm not really sure why the notes needed to be in this, because by and large, you never really are in need of them. Now this is interesting here. This mumble pad. Mumble stand on it to perform great magic. Okay. Hey bro, what's up? 
You, you doing all right there? It looks like you can't move, but you seem like you're having a good time. You're having a big party. What does this sign say? What does this sign say? What does this sign say? The mighty shiny one sleeps until his services are required once again. Okay. Well, we could keep going up, but what's over here? This looks impressive, but the music changed slightly. These, I believe, are Moggies. They're cats that are dressed like Spartan warriors, which is kind of cool. This is an interesting honeycomb. It has an exclamation point on it. You've collected a skill stop, honeycomb! Press B to stop your energy bar as close to the top as possible. So yeah, it'll just cycle through one by one. Once it reaches the top, you can press B. This is a useful thing to pick up if you are running really low on HP, because you can potentially recover all your HP back. But depending on where you are in the game, the greater the basically the higher the world you're in, the faster it goes, and eventually it's very difficult to stop at the top. So that's a bit of a problem. There's a stone up. Oh! Hi dude, what's up? Eh? We speak English in this game. <laughs> yeah, you tell him. The, pun the beehives are back as well. Hey, dude. So the beehives will often drop one of those skill stop honeycombs. And generally two regular ones. Hey, what's up, man? Stop right there! What do you want? Oh, uh, we want to go in there, as it sounds cool! Of course it's cool! Everyone wants to see the stony kickball games! Stand aside then, bozo! We'll miss the action! Bozo, I'm Officer You Know Gonna Pass, and there ain't no tickets left! They sold out while you were playing Banjo-Kazooie! We don't want to watch! We're here to kick butt and win! Nice try, but I'm afraid you can't. The games are only open to stonies. Oh, go on, please? Nope. Ah, uh, how about a bribe? How dare you! This is a respectable organization! Get lost, both of you! Oh no, Officer You No Go Pass is apparently very upset with us. Yeah, we are not gonna pass by him. One thing that I like about Banjo Tooie, I feel like in Banjo Kazooie, all, of the, all there are very few major characters, and like the one off characters from the worlds were really boring. It's, oh, it's Leaky the Bucket. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's Trunker the Tree. None of them had a lot of personality. I feel like even the one off characters from specific worlds in this game have a lot more personality than this, which is great. Also, we've got the, the green Jinjo up there, but we have no way of reaching him. Let's just keep following the path of notes. The notes in this are basically just guiding you to different parts of the world. I know they kind of did that in the first game with the notes as well, but I felt like they were more spread out, so you actually had to cover, like, eat every corner of the world. Whereas these, the notes are just kind of given to you for free. Got the giant door up here. But we can't move it, and we can't make it open. Same with the door that we saw lower down. Anyhow... Hey, get your sorry hide over here and press B. Um, okay. Are we finally gonna meet you? Oh, hi, military mole. <laughs> Drill Sergeant Jam Jars reporting for duty, sir. Banjo, get a load of this bozo. He looks like bottles in uniform. Course I look like bottles, you punk. He's my brother. How's the geek keeping, anyhow? Uh, not too good. Recently deceased at the hands of Grunty the Witch. Sorry to hear that, Fleeball. <laughs> Did he go out fighting? Playing cards, actually. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you'll be wanting to learn some of my special moves to get even with the witch, huh? Ugh, not really. Bottles taught us loads in the last game. Ha! He only knew novice moves! You'll n get nowhere without my advanced techniques! Sounds good to us, Jam Jars. Why not teach us a few now? Not that easy, punk! You've gotta prove your sorry selves first by collecting me a few notes! Come back if you can find enough! Hey, wait a minute! 
he looks creepy without the, the sunglasses. I see you've got enough notes for my first lesson. Listen and learn, you punks. Egg aim. What you need is an aim in sight. Hit the target, then you might. First person view by pressing up C. Hit Z to fire with accuracy. That'll be all. This missed! <laughs> nice try, Jam Jars. He sometimes hits that on the way in. It's the bane of speedrunners, because that loses time every time he does it. <laughs> yeah, so one of the cool things I love about this game, you start with all the moves from Banjo-Kazooie, but then you learn new ones from Jam Jars. And a lot of the new moves are really cool. So this first one is Egg Aiming. In case you couldn't tell by his rhyming site, this basically gives us a first-person Egg Aiming shooter. <laughs> That's not up. We basically can go first-person shooter now. We can go first-person view and shoot eggs. <laughs> and give us way better aiming with it. And for example, these stony heads are kind of annoying, but if we shoot the jewel up there, that'll stun them briefly, which is really cool. We're going to be needing this first-person egg aiming a lot in the game, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, Jam Jars' moves are really easy to get because, again, notes are really easy to get in this game. Oh, hey, it's Mumbo's skull! You found another warp pad! Move onto it and press B to warp to any other warp pad that you have activated in this world! Okay. So now if we go here, we can warp back to the world entry and exit, which is the other one we got. Or we can cancel with B. I don't want to warp back. But each world in the game, well, almost every world in the game, will have, I believe, five of these. So... These are really useful. Being it, again, because the worlds are a lot bigger in this, being able to warp between them really cuts back on backtracking or makes backtracking a lot less annoying. Hey, meow. Yeah, as you can see, we already have 80 of the 100 notes in the game, and we've barely even explored this world. The notes are a little too easy to get. Well, this is a giant. This is a giant temple. Let's walk up it and see what's up. This looks more like one of those Aztec pyramids. Actually, I wonder if the Mayan pyramids also looked like this. Anyhow, let's go inside. Target Zan's Temple, the lobby. Okay. Halt! No one enters until they have learned the ancient art of bird handling. Gee, I wonder what that means. Perhaps that Jam Jars Bozo can tell us. Yeah, we can't actually enter this temple yet until we learn one of Jam Jars' new moves. But remember this place, it's very important. Oh, bad. I love the music of this game too, by the way. So one thing we can do if we go back behind this pyramid, we can Talon trot up this slope, and then up this slope, and hey, it's one of the few jiggies in this game that's just lying out for us to pick up. Now have two jiggies. First jiggy of the world. Let's explore more around this pyramid. <laughs> also, the chanting in this world is uh the main chant is like, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. <laughs> According to the composer. Just pitched in a weird way. Which is apparently a chant that the Brits seen at sporting events. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> But that's what they're chanting in the background of this music. Yeah, if we go behind the pyramid, this is a funny looking note. Nice one, punk! Treble clefts are worth a whopping 20 notes! Yeah, the treble, there's a treble cleft in each world, and that'll give you 20 notes. So we now have every note in this entire world, and we've, again, barely explored it at all. However, there's not a whole lot more we can explore. I guess we'll go and pay Mumble a visit. We haven't seen him since the opening cutscene. What's up, Mumbo? Oh, um, that's an interesting thing. Hey! Hey, little guy. You're a funny creature. Also, this is... Uh... Do I want to step in that? That looks like some toxic goo. No, we can walk in just fine. You've caught a Globo! They're supposed to have magical powers! Okay. Mumbo's skull is a lot bigger in this than it was in the first game. <laughs> he got a second floor. 
Ooh, a signpost here. What does this say? Use the giant shiny one to open the huge stone doors! Okay. Hey, Mumbo. Taking a nap like usual? Ah, Baron Bird here at last. Mumbo best shaman in game, so build new skull. Mumbo also want to help, but must find me magic creature. We've got a Globo! Must give magic creature to Mumbo if want help. Do you want Mumbo's help? <laughs> We've got a Globo! Is this the one that was in my basement? Because that is mine. You need to find me a different one. Yeah. So Globos are basically Banjo-Tooie's version of the Mumbo tokens from the first game. I like the Globos better because you only ever have to collect one in order to enlist Mumbo's help as opposed to having to collect a ton of the Mumbo tokens. Also, this game will tell you how many Globos are on each level. Surprise, surprise, there are two on each level. So, we're gonna say, yes, we want Mumbo's help. Sure, we need all the help we can get. Throw it in Mumbo's bag. Mumbo pulls up his one cloth. Ah, uh, Mumbo get to be hero at last. Press B to see mighty shaman zap stick. Return me to my chair when you want to be Baron Bird again. So when I when I heard when I first heard him say this, I figured I'm like, oh cool, we actually now get to like use the magic wand on Banjo to turn him into the whatever creature they are in. No, we literally get to play as Mumbo now. <laughs> Mumbo is a playable character. Except there's one problem. Mumbo sucks. Like when I first realized I could move around and play as Mumbo, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is so good. Mumbo is not very good. Basically, like, you'll be super excited to play as him as the, uh, for the first time, and then every time after that, you're basically like, oh man, I have to be Mumbo now, which is a bit of a downside. I felt like Mumbo had, was a lot of wasted potential. He can move around, he can jump, he can't do anything really fancy, though, and his one attack is this, which is... It looks cool, but it's kind of pathetic. Yeah, and yeah, we can just jump into the chair if we want to go back to being Banjo and Kazooie, but... Basically, the purpose of being Mumbo is not because he's good, but because he can go to those Mumbo pads that are on each level and use them. And depending on the level that you uh, get Mumbo for, the pads will do something different. So there's only one Mumbo pad in this first world, and it only does one thing, but it's pretty cool. So let's show off what it does. Hey, dude. Please get out of Mumbo's way. So the Mumbo pad was back down this direction. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Press B to see mighty Mumbo magic. Yeah, Mumbo no longer turns Banjo and Kazooie into different creatures. He's just used used on these special pads in order to do different things. So let's see what this first pad will do. Oh, this works. Summon Golden Goliath. <laughs> We will raise this golden statue of a monkey and rule the world with it. He's apparently also a robot. What you gonna do for us, Golden Goliath? Also, that's why we needed the Globo to summon him. Mumble magic make Golden Goliath rise. Magic only lasts short time. To control me again, return statue to its base and press B. So now we get to play as Golden Goliath for a short 75 seconds. What we want to do... So Golden Goliath can do a variety of things. You can move around and you can press B. Blam! And kick things. So this is the only way to actually destroy those statues. We can also go up to a door like this and BAM! Oh. Well, we weren't able to kick it open, but we were able to destroy part of it. So we'll be able to go through there as Banjo and Kazooie. What else can we do? Water comes from that part of the from that grate, but I don't think that'll do anything. There's a pyramid over there, but we can't actually go. We could go in there, but we can't actually do anything meaningful there. I'm just gonna take a dip. <laughs> Oh, Golden Goliath can also jump, if you could call it a jump. That's honestly pretty pathetic. Oh, man. Did I ruin this? Oh, oh no, am I stuck in here? 
Oh wait, no. Oh, thank goodness there's a ramp that leads out of this water. If it was just a pool with no ramp, we'd be in trouble. Oh, yo, Mumble magic run out. That's okay. I, that's gonna happen at least once. However, even though it looked like we used the Globo for that, we can summon Golden Goliath as many times as we want with just that one Globo, so that's cool. Also, the Mumble Pads say Ikum Bokum on them, <laughs> which is a nice callback for to the first game. Alright, we'll summon Golden Goliath again, because there's still a couple more things we need to do with him. Alright. This time we're gonna go downhill, but we're not going into the water. First thing we can do is there's this boulder here. If you couldn't tell what we need to do, we can kick it with Golden Goliath to destroy it. And there's a flight pad underneath it. That'll come in handy when we're back to Bean Banjo. Now there's another door here. We're gonna kick that open as well. But this one actually goes open, <laughs> opens up wide, so even Golden Goliath can enter through here. This takes us to a new part of the world, which is the Jade Snake Grove. So there's another Jam Jar Silo there, but we can't activate him with Golden Goliath. This is Quicksand. Banjo and Kazooie try to enter through there. They're going to get eaten by a weird monster. However, Golden Goliath can march across it and get that Jiggy, because he's tall enough to get it. So that's one other thing we need Golden Goliath for. And then the last thing we need Golden Goliath for is if we go this way, there's another pyramid. There are lots of pyramids in this world. It's really cool. There's a door here, and we can give that a mighty boom kick. And I believe that's everything Golden Goliath can do in this world. Although there's another, another tunnel this way. Oh good, he's just short enough to be able to go for here. Oh, another warp pad. How lovely. Another thing that you can do here. So this Jinjo looks like it's in a high up place. Oh, well. If you time it just right, you can actually kick the Jinjo and your hitbox will touch it and you'll collect it. But that's okay, we can collect it as Banjo and Kazooie as well. Alright, and that's literally everything that Mumbo can do on this first world. <laughs> Which is, yeah. Basically, you become Mumbo so you can take him to the pads and use them, and then you go back to being Banjo and Kazooie, and that's it. Mumbo's a bit of a wasted character. It would be cool, it would be interesting if he got, if he got new moves as well, or if, like, he could do actually do cool things that Banjo and Kazooie couldn't, that weren't just basically, like, you... Only Mumbo could push this switch. <laughs> It's not as blatant as Donkey Kong 64 with regards to like, oh, only this Kong can go here just because their face is on it. <laughs> but, yeah, I wish I wish the, the developers did a little bit more with Mumbo. <laughs> Mumbo's sad. It's okay, Mumbo, you helped us out greatly. We can now explore the whole course. 